Look, um, Sunday People, awesome. Your paper, The Sun, awe inspiring. The men's rowing eight gold, the women, the bronze. I mean, all the doubts after Tokyo when they got one silver and one bronze, eight medals in Paris, best overseas Olympics for, for rowing by Team GB. But that race was just, I mean, look, they're the world champions, they're the best mm. in the business, that that eight, but they put the hammer down against the uh, the Dutch uh, from like sort of 850 metres onwards. It was just one of the fantastic performances. But look at the sacrifices that they made. And I'll take one individual of the eight, plus the Cox in particular, Rory Gibbs. I mean, you know, he, he needed to be helped into the medical tent mm. afterwards. He was talking about, my senses are shot right now. The ferocious will to win of these athletes, these rowers, to you know, they are extraordinary. And just having a little look at uh, Rory's background, he was at Millfield School, took up rowing after getting injured at rugby. You know, he's, he damaged his, his knees playing rugby and he went into rowing. He was also a very good 100 meter and 200 meter sprinters. But like many of these, these oars people who are so devoted, so dedicated to their sport, They've also quite rounded people, and and you look at someone like Rory, who actually spends a lot of his time mentoring aspiring rowers. So fantastic sort of balancers, individuals as well as supreme athletes. I know I was, I was taking the Mickey a little bit, but I'm genuinely interested. Have you done proper rowing? I don't mean rowing the family in the boat on the lake. I mean, have you actually had a go at doing it properly? Because I, I saw a great feature Jill Scott did on the BBC about how difficult it was, and when you catch a crab, how fast it is, and if you catch a crab, it nearly pulls you out of the boat. Yeah, I mean, it's just. Have you done I, it? Yeah, I, I have. I did it once. We all had to do it at, uh, at senior school. Went down to the boathouse at Putney, and uh, I thought, no, this is far too demanding. I mean, even at, even at that level, like sort of 13 year old, 14 year old, the, the, the dedication that they have to give. And if you go to Henley and you see all the schools and you see the universities and, it, you know, this perception of it as, a, as an elite sport, I'm not sure I really buy that. I think it's being exp- expanded. Steve Redgrave sums that up you know in terms of the, the journey that he went on and the the excellence that, uh, you know, that he aspired to and it's done brilliantly at. And I think you'll see even more. I think there'll be so many people will be looking not simply at the at the, the the sporting substance of the men and women rowers, but what they're like as individuals. They all interview well. They've all got great yeah. backstories. And of course, we had a poor Olympics previously. We had a great pedigree in rowing. Then it went off a bit, and now it's back on. And now, but I still think it's a very difficult sport for your maybe average school kid to get into. Well, you, but you can go down to a boat club on the Thames and you, yeah, you I know. can start well, what, what out about, like Where that? else am I going to go? I mean, well, well, you've swum the time. I've, 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 I've swum the time and there were certain the things time, in the water the there. The that, the that, that, um, yeah, that, that there were certain things in the water there that weren't boats. But there's a, there's a boathouse. I mean, when you go over the bridge, I think mm. you look down to the left and there's a there's, there's I don't a know boat. anybody who does it, I must admit. No, well, but, the, the, but, but maybe people will be watching the Olympics, listening to talk sport, watching on the television, and will go, that looks fantastic. And that gives you like a stamina and a focus for life. I know more people who do gymnastics. Uh, back in the Sunday Mirror was uh, Max Whitlock just missing out on a medal. And what an Olympian that man's been. What an Olympian. And just his interview afterwards, you know, he was just so frustrated. But balancing that with the pride in his career as well, which has just been, be, be, been remarkable. I mean, just... You know, we, we always set it against football. You know, there's a couple of good, if I can do them very quickly, football stories on the oh, back yeah, of your yeah. paper, The Sun, on the back of the, the Mail, football, the sport that never sleeps. It's always there. Uh, Newcastle and <laughs> Liverpool in for, for Mark Gay. You can understand that yeah. even before, you know, he played, what, six out of seven games at the, uh, at the Euros. Do you fear we'll lose that one, Newcastle? To Liverpool, if Liverpool come, come in there, yeah, I mean... Talk of Spurs as well, Danny Kelly was saying yeah. earlier on. Look, wherever he goes, he he's, he's likely to start because he is so good. I would have thought Newcastle's need for him is possibly a little bit more pressing, but then they've got to sort of juggle PSR. Uh, the other story that on the back page of your paper, Arsenal in for Julian Alvarez, mm. and uh, Atletico Madrid are in for But why on earth would City sell to Arsenal? Because it'd probably be a two-horse, three-horse race again. You can see Liverpool, not simply because of their good pre-season form, but because of the squad they've got. You can see sort of Liverpool featuring. I know that, uh, that you know, they sold uh, Zinchenko and Gabriel Jesus, but you, they would be crazy to let Alvarez go to Arsenal because he's just what? the I'm... type of player they need because they need a number nine. I know he plays different positions, but he would be fantastic for Arsenal. Fantastic for Arsenal. I was amazed to see, or hear yesterday, that he's played 50. 
59 games last season. Uh, yeah. how, do, how do you manage that? He, never, he wasn't a starter very often. Well, because they're involved. When was injured, but they're involved in sort of five or six competitions, and it it is crazy what he's on. I mean, I, I did a piece on him a week ago, and everyone, you know, saying that he's played all these games this season, and everyone quite rightly pointed out he's also got the Olympics to come. You know, do you include Olympics as part of last season in terms of his tally? Could be probably be mid sixties with Argentina in terms of games. I mean, it is crazy, and you can see why FIFA Pro and the PFA are taking on the authorities about the number of games that people play. And when they do their presentations, Julian Alvarez is mentioned with this amount of flying he has to do. I know they're well looked after, they're well paid, and they get first-class travel and first-class facilities and medical attention, sports science, but it is a little bit too much. So, uh, But yeah, uh, f- time for final s- quick story. Yeah, Back page, Daily Mail, I am a woman. Yeah, um, absolutely. Amani Khalif. I mean, it's just such a, a, a sensitive issue, but it's, a, it's an issue that kind of has, does not work well in headlines, does not work well on social media. But if you sort of peer through all the sort of, you know, the blast that this is not a man versus woman. This is not a man hitting a woman um, debate as originally uh, perceived. To an extent, it's, it, you know, there's a dehumanising element of Khalif. And so when the, I am a woman, that the piece by Mike Keegan in the Daily Mail, he's um, Khalif, she spoke afterwards very strongly. Um, I am a woman, spoke in Arabic, but it was translated to, to the English media. And I thought it was good to see the respect between Khalif and Hamori, the, uh, the Hungarian, after uh, Khalif, she, she won that game. But the debate's been blurred. So th- this is not a man against a woman. This is not a transgender debate. This is more... Um, DSD, the difference of sexual development, and I still don't understand the, the IOC, who've come out very much in uh, in her camp, in Khalif's camp, uh, why they haven't been um, testing to check gender eligibility, just to sort of clarify the whole situation, and then that would make the sort of debate go away after what happened in the uh, in the previous boxing in the in the World Championships when she was declared ineligible. So look, a lot of co- a lot of confusion, a lot of misinformation. Social media, is, as ever, has, has yes, I noticed you strayed you strayed sort of outside your comfort zone in the week and decided to tweet about this and got absolutely metaphorically battered. No, I think it was it was quite even. It actually well, explain what you did. Well, no, all I did was that there's a very good. Um, Sean Ingle was a very good chief sports writer, correspondent of the uh, the Guardian. I just thought it was such a sort of important issue in women's sport that they needed more clarity on it. I think it needs more clarity from the IOC and the boxing uh, federations, and because you want to see an absolutely a, a fair sport, and that they could have clarified this earlier on. So I don't so, think the IOC, I don't think anyone's really handled it that well. Great, right? You're in charge. Now, I put you in charge of the IOC. Uh, what are you going to decide going forward? Just do you have think? Ju- just have tests before. The so Olympics. you are going, which, which means she may well have been ruled out. Well, no, because she's saying she's no, on she's gen- woman. On, on gender, gender test as opposed to a chromosome test. But it's it's tricky, isn't it's it? It's really tricky, Sean. The, mean, the minute I even open my mouth talking about this, I think. Hmm. Am I straying into territory here? Well, somebody will say you're ill-informed, and uh, nobody seems properly informed or totally informed yeah. on this to make a, a judgment. Yeah, but then you have to look at the testosterone levels and why she was ruled out by by the IBA. The IBA have 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 since sort of pointed out their stance on it. But it's just such a febrile atmosphere. I know it's social media. I know it's the Olympics. Emotions are heightened, but at I just thought there was. It was great to see that respect at the end of it because Samori could have said because she made one or two comments before the bout, and then she was incredibly respectful to uh, to her opponent afterwards, to Khalif afterwards. If you, so if you get like a, a runner who runs ahead, you go, oh well, what can you do? A, a runner who you know has male chromosomes or whatever, you sort of go, well, I can't, I can't do anything about it. But if you're a boxer, you're physically in danger. This is where. Yeah. It, makes it a lot more difficult, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, look, it, but it's such an important debate, but it should, in a way, have been clarified. The IOC should have seen this coming down the track and actually sort of clarified it, either, you know, getting more involved in the uh, in in testing, because at the moment you've got this febrile atmosphere when when she competes. So I think <laughs> on everyone, and look, it's not a look good, good look for the Olympics, it's not a good look for, uh, for for boxing, and they could have avoided this.